everyone, and welcome to the Purple People Podcast. I know you guys are just as excited as I am. The Minnesota Vikings won 37-34 over top of the Green Bay Packers, and we are headed to the playoffs. Along playoffs. with, as always, Adam Carlson. What? That's me. Hi. Hello. So how pumped are you? Very. Scale of 1 to 10, I am at an 11. Oh, man. And that was final cap. I was hoping this would be a good, close, competitive game. I was not really expecting what we saw, but we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute or two. Let's go into giving out our game ball and naming a donkey. All right. Game ball is going to MV Peterson, Adrian Peterson. 100 All right. yards on the ground, uh, over 2,000 on the season. He was nine yards short of hitting the all-time single-season rushing record, but he's in a respectable number two position and uh, clearly is the MVP not only of this team, but I think of the whole NFL. When they did the interview after the game, it sounded like he thought he was close, but he didn't know how close. Yeah, he said in his press conference afterward that he wasn't keeping track of where he was on the field, that his mind the whole time was on winning the football game, and if he got it, it was meant to be. If it's not, he's going to get it next year. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jerome Felton said the same thing, that he'll be back and he'll do his best to help Peterson. Those guys got a good chemistry going on. Yep. My game ball is going to Christian Ponder. Good good choice. 234 yards passing, which isn't a ton, but for him, that's quite a bit. And for our... Three touchdowns, no interceptions, 16 rush yards. He had a nice game all around. Smart game. Didn't turn the ball over. Yeah, he managed the ball where, where it needed to be, made plays when they needed to come, and uh, got us the victory. But now for my donkey of the week. This is a guy that didn't play his best. And I always feel bad calling these guys out because I know they're trying their best. But I've been harping on this guy for a while now. Jasper Brinkley. One tackle, struggled in coverage. I was very disappointed. He had took bad angles, missed some tackles. I am really concerned about the linebackers. But you guys know that if you listen. Mm-hmm. And I am going to continue my trend of not naming a donkey as to keep the positive vibes going now that we are in the postseason. Why do I got to be Mr. Negative? I don't know. One of us has to, so it might as well be you, Adam. <laughs> let's jump into talking about the offense. And I know everyone wants to talk about Adrian, but let's let's talk about Ponder first for a minute. Okay. Something really surprised me in this game when I was looking over the stats. I saw that Christian Ponder... Beat Aaron Rodgers in yards per pass play. 7.8 to 7.4. I did not expect that. I I did not know that before you you said that. That's an interesting little stat there. I mean, I know a lot of it was that big hit to Jarius, right? Yeah. That long bomb that was laid perfectly where it needed to be. That play was beautiful. And in uh, Ponder's post-game presser, he makes a little joke about how... uh, he uh, he made that pass despite the fact that he doesn't have the arm strength to do it. And, and <laughs> it's a hilarious comment, and I highly recommend if you guys don't listen to the the uh, post-game press conferences, which tend to kind of be the same thing from week to week, uh, this is one that definitely you want to check them out from both Ponder and Peterson. They got some good things to say in them. <laughs> yeah, you were telling me about a clip from the uh, where they were talking about the Peterson touchdown pass from ponder and some pretty zany stuff there check it out if you have it. yeah definitely uh, the vikings also averaged almost six yards per rush and that was mostly in thanks to adrian peterson busting off some nice runs yeah like i said 199 yards on the ground and it's at the point now where over 100 yard performances for him look like the average like you just almost expect it. Oh, yeah, he had 200 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Yeah, that that's about on par with what he usually does. <laughs> Sadly, it's true. We expect that much from yeah. him. And I got a weird question for you. Who is this Dewan Harris guy from Green Bay, and where did he come from? Because he ran the ball pretty well. He, he was looking good. I don't know, but he had 70 yards on the ground, and uh, I don't I don't like that. Our run defense... Uh, needs to do better than that. We can't be letting guys gouge us for for numbers like that. 
Yeah, I gotta say, I never really paid much attention to him, but he came out and ran the ball well. Yeah, I d- don't know anything about him at all. No, that's the kind. That's the kind of preparation you get here on on the podcast from time to time. <laughs> hey, but we're honest. We'll admit we got no idea who he is. I'm, well, I'm looking. We aren't gonna make stuff up or anything like that. This is this is us. Um, I'm looking at him right now. He's got one season of experience with. Cool. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, we also saw Jerome Simpson, Michael Jenkins, all had some big catches. I don't know how Michael Jenkins reeled in that touchdown. I don't know. That should have been an interception. I was looking at that, and I thought for sure that Ponder had thrown an interception. And when it got ruled a uh, touchdown for Michael Jenkins, I was out of my chair excited and like fist pumping on that one. That was uh, uh, some kind of play for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I just saw Ponder throw it into a mess of dudes, and then like a big pile of guys landed, and referee came out with his arms up, and I was just like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, too. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. We also saw contributions from Jerome Felton and Red Ellison picking up big first downs on pass plays. Like I always say, I love getting the guys in the backfield involved. We also saw um, Wright get involved from the backfield on a pass play. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Jarius. You give him the rest of this season and another full off season uh, next year. He should be a pretty good weapon for this team. Uh, still, definitely they can develop him along with Percy Harvin. They can have something dangerous. Yeah, and that's the key is going to be alongside Percy Harvin uh, with this team. I think, uh, but we'll save that talk for later. Uh, Jarius, the one thing that still frightens me a little bit about him is he's still got a case of the drops when he's out there on yes. the field, and he means to get that tightened up. On the positive side, we're finally seeing production from Jerome Simpson. Yes. He took a pretty wicked hit, though, in that game, I believe. Yeah, they gave him the whole uh, nine yards with the concussion test, and it came out, uh, I, I don't know what's the word, I don't want to say positive, it came out uh, <laughs> negative. That he, well, sure. yeah, he came out negative, you know, he didn't have a concussion, so that he was able to come back into the game. So we uh, we dodged one there. From what I understand, he was unable to stand without falling before he left the field. Mm-hmm. And uh, unless the symptom, symptoms resurface here in the next day or two, yeah, shouldn't really worry about him playing next week. Uh, but keep your eyes open for any information. And hey, take a look at the Purple People podcast page. We, have, we put information up. Yeah, lots of information. I'm going to say, I'm going to make a prediction that I think Stephen Burton will be active next week just because of the potential of uh, maybe Jerome uh, getting hurt or whatnot. I think maybe they'll want the extra security and have Steven up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're starting to see a weird trend, though, with the running backs that I don't seem to care for. I know that Adrian Peterson rushed the ball 34 times, had almost 200 yards, Mm -hmm. and that's great and everything. Defenses are starting to queue in. Uh, when Toby Gerhardt comes in the game, they're probably passing. Yeah, I know what you mean. You can, uh, everyone can tell. I know I can tell at home. I know you can tell at home that uh, when Toby goes in, he's going to either block or they're gonna. He's gonna be the checkdown on those passing plays. And I would like to see them uh, potentially run the ball with Toby Moore. Uh, going into the postseason, because even though Adrian is MV Peterson is doing some amazing things, theoretically, Toby should have a fresher set of legs underneath him from not seeing much work, and uh, maybe they can use him to uh, pound and get some of those tougher yards here. A lot of this can be blamed on Bill Musgrave, and I was going to save this till after the injury report, but there has been a report from CBS Sports' Jason Lockenfora that Browns coach Pat Shermer has been linked as a possible offensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it on that one. I don't know where uh, I don't know where this report would be coming from. Uh, CBS Sports, Jason Lockenfor. Well, I mean, I know that's who reported on it, but I mean, I don't know where he would get his information, like where they would. I guess the point I'm going to make is Minnesota is uh, we're in the playoffs now. We're in the wild <laughs> right. of the playoffs. This team is not 
even beginning to look at what players are going to be gone, what coaches are going to be gone. So if Rick Spielman doesn't know what he's going to do with this team, how does CBS Sports know that Bill Musgrave is going to be gone? That to me seems like speculation more than anything else. Yeah, I'm just repeating what I read. And yeah. I know a lot of people aren't happy with Musgrave, and I don't know if they know a lot about Shermer. Might be worth doing a little research. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure if I want anyone from the Cleveland Browns on our <laughs> on our <laughs> roster. And hey, come on, the Browns are winners. Cleveland rocks, right? Uh, Drew Carey. Yeah, no, actually, it it does not. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can keep Brad Childress, and they can keep the the rest of them. Although Colt McCoy is a, a backup, I would take him. <laughs> We're completely off time. All right, let's move on to talking about the defense for a Yeah, let's bit. get back to Minnesota instead of the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> now, I include this in talking about the defense just because I don't know where else to put it. But, boy, the Vikings had a lot of penalties this game. Yeah, that drove me just absolutely nuts. Uh, what happened, Adam? Any, any idea? Why, was it the pressure of the game? or, or Here's what? the thing, too. A lot, of, a lot of the grief from these penalties has been put on Phil Lodehold. <laughs> it seems like every time there was a penalty, the camera flashed on Phil Lodehold. It did. And it's, most of the time, it wasn't even really his fault. <laughs> one of those calls was a terrible call. One of them was they could have picked anyone on the line, and, and they, they picked, picked him. Phil. And I have a theory on that, is that... Phil Lodeholt, for anyone who's seen him in person, is hands down He's a large man. hands down the largest guy I think I've ever met. And so by default, I think it's just easy to call penalties on him because he's so big <laughs> that like you can just you just see him there and even if it's the guy next to him, I think sometimes they still get called unfairly on Phil. <laughs> And we saw a uh, roughing the quarterback passer would look like Aaron Rodgers flopped backwards. Yeah, that was... I don't know. To me, there was a lot of the, those penalties. I understand why they happened, but no, that, didn't that's the league take... we're in right now. So it, it is. It is what it is. Uh, we also saw a lot of bad angles and missed tackles. I know you heard me talking about the linebackers doing that, but we saw it from the corners too, especially on those quick screens. Yeah. Uh... Antoine Winfield not being in there for the good bulk of this game definitely hurt back there. Definitely. And during the game, too, it, he aggravated his broken hand. And I don't know, his status for next week is up in the air. The Vikings did okay without him, but okay isn't going to make it mm -hmm. past a lot of teams in the playoffs. No, it's not. I had read a report that uh, his hand was you know, swollen up twice the size of what it was supposed to be. And they're going to be on a little bit of a short week. I think this game is played on Saturday, right? Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Time, yep. Yeah, so um, I, I don't know. His status has got to be definitely questionable, at least right now. Another guy that's going to be questionable on Sunday is Brian Robison. Mm -hmm. he, played, he played the lot of the game on, on Sunday, but... He, he reportedly, from what I understand, when he left the field, he needed a lot of help getting out of his pad that his shoulder was that messed up. But and that's never a good sign. Like you said, when he was out there, I mean, he came out big for us with that. Uh, that well, it was a strip sack, wasn't it? Yeah, he slapped the ball right out of Rogers' hand. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe potentially we could see him in a really limited fashion next week with. Uh, and I can't even talk right now with uh, Everson Griffin um, filling in for him out there on the end uh, more. Well, that's exactly who I was just going to talk yep. about. <laughs> Everson Griffin, what a game he had. He came in, and they've got him in that weird formation where they put three defensive ends down to rush the quarterback, mm -hmm. and it's really cool in passing situations because you saw Everson Griffin, although he only had four tackles in this game, Three of them were sacked yeah. for a loss of 20 yards. That's big. <laughs> that, that's big. He's a, that's he, very he's big. going to be a big-time player for the Vikings. And uh, if Brian can't go, if he's in that much pain, uh, definitely Everson needs to be out there because he's going to make those plays for you. 
And we also saw Jared Allen get a sack for 12 yards. Yeah, Jared Allen, who, you know, he's playing banged up too. Um, I, I want to, this is going to be my end rant was about Jared, but I'm just going to go ahead and fit it in right now. Have at her. And I'm going to say that uh, anyone who says that Jared should be traded, and I know, yeah, we'd all entertain the notion, blah, 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 earlier, and it was fun to talk about, but let's be real here for a minute. Let's look at this team and go, Jared doesn't need to be traded from the Vikings. Do they need to sit him down and have him restructure his contract? for a smaller amount. Yeah, they do. And I think he'll do that. But Jared is still a top five player at his position and him playing out there with basically one arm is still giving us a hell of a lot of production. And he's got what 11 or 12 sacks on the season. So uh, we're still getting a lot, a, a lot out of Jared Allen and he's a locker room leader and we should be lucky to have him on the team not talking about trading him to whatever other spot you want to. Now, although I would understand the trade, I also I get why they why people are saying it is because of guys like Everson Griffin who could step in and do the job. But it seems like this defense is finding ways to use these guys. Hey, if we can all these defensive ends in ways that are creative and fun and exciting, and I, I don't know, I, I just don't see any of them being wasted. No, I don't either, and if you can get a package where you can get Jared Allen, Everson Griffin, and Brian Robinson out on the field together. And Kevin Williams, along, don't forget him. Along with Kevin Williams, and then, you know, you got Chad Greenway out there, and uh, yeah, all the Harrison Smith out there. I mean, that that creates mismatches for the opposing team, and that's what that's what you want to see. You want to see mismatches that we can, you know, we can take advantage of. Definitely, and don't forget that Aaron Henderson had seven tackles this game, yeah. which is a nice amount of tackles, but he also took some bad angles. And you know, Overall, it was a decent game from him, but nothing special. A lot of the fans are calling for the head of A.J. Jefferson, and I'm not really getting that. Well, you got to blame someone, and uh, we've kind of gotten over the whole blame Chris Cluey thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cluey. Yeah, Cluey must be thinking an awful lot about punting now all of a sudden. Uh-huh. Sure seems that way. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I I like the play that I've been seeing from AJ Jefferson. This I don't I just think that fans don't understand the way this defense is set up to take away the long play, give away the really short stuff underneath and make tackles and stop the run game. If they can do that, they can eat up the clock. I, I don't know. I, I just don't understand why fans want all this pressing and stunts. And this defense isn't set up for all that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of a, a lot of that stuff, too. I actually like I like the way our defense plays. Um, traditionally, the Minnesota defense of having the, you know, you're not going to be able to run against us just at all, and we're going to apply pressure to the quarterback and just knock the holy hell out of them and we're going to take away your main receiving threat and you're going to have to beat us in other ways and I I, I like that and uh, we're seeing the team uh, doing pretty well in those categories this season well what was really nice was seeing how this defense was frustrating Aaron Rodgers Mm -hmm. you saw him back there just upset and just confused because he loves that long ball. The Packers usually live and die by the long ball. Now the Vikings only gave up that one long pass to Jordy Nelson. Yeah, the 73 yarder, which, uh, oh boy, I know we're excited right now, but there was a stretch in this game, particularly right after that one, where I thought for all the momentum seemed like it was on Green Bay's side. And uh, I didn't know if we were going to come out of this one with a win. Did you see on that play, Jordy Nelson had a clear path to the end zone. Who caught him from behind? Uh, A.J. Jefferson. I say I don't remember, but it, was it A.J.? It was. Yeah, well, there you go. That's good to see. This team's always looking for speedy guys that can make tackles, and that's that saved the team seven points right there. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk a little bit about special teams. Blair Walsh. I know we do it every week. 
three for three on field goals, four for four on extra points, hit the game winning kick not once but twice after being iced. I I uh, after they uh, did the timeout for the the thing, I go Blair Walsh might be a rookie, but you're not phasing him one bit. You're just giving him a practice field goal to see if he can make it or if he needs to do any adjustments by it's calling the timeout like that. I admit it, that second kick scared me a little bit. It was a little too close for me. Yeah, it it the, the first one was nicer, but uh, hey, he still made it, <laughs> so that that's all that counts. Exactly. And the kickoff coverage was fairly solid again, but we saw a couple slips through there. And usually this coverage team is very solid. They were very, very solid all year, but for some reason they struggled against Green Bay. And it's even weird because Randall Cobb, their strong return guy, was not playing. Maybe that was why. Maybe they kind of took it for granted a little bit that, uh, well, we've been playing well all season long and their number one guy isn't out there. So, yeah, we'll be able to do it. And, hey, they slipped by him. So it, it's good. It gives them something to uh, to study in, in the film room and something, you know, that they can look at and go, we need to improve upon this when we play next week against Green Bay and Lambeau Field. So how different is it going to be next week? When we're watching the Vikings in the playoffs, the year after a three-win season, uh, Adrian Peterson doesn't have to worry about records or anything like that. Uh, All the players will just be playing to win the game. Mm -hmm. It's going to be nice. Oh, yeah. Sit back, relax. We don't have to count yards. We don't have to do any of that funky stuff. It's going to be beyond excited, um, exciting. And I know... uh, Earlier this morning, I thought of this, too, is when I was looking on Twitter and uh, someone had posted that, oh, here's what the early draft order looks like for uh, next year's NFL draft. And, you you know, you see the Chiefs and the Jaguars and all those teams that are down there. And we kind of, after last season and a couple of the seasons we had had prior to that, you get kind of used to Minnesota, oh, you know, we drafted you know, down low towards the, you know, the, the, right, the you know, draft. Like and eight. And somewhere around there. looking at it going with a big smile on my face going, yeah, we're nowhere near that. Like we're, we're playing, no. we're playing for the playoffs tonight. And now we're going, I mean, yeah, we're freaking, we're, a, we're a playoff team right now. So it yeah, is. The Vikings will be traveling to Green Bay for the wild card round of the playoffs. It's going to be tough. 7 p.m. Central time, Saturday night. You got to watch it. I am excited but I am very frightened at the same time of playing in Lambeau Field, and I'm not afraid to admit that. It's going to be a tough game uh, Definitely. playing against Green Bay, and boy, oh boy, if they can pull off a win next week, they earned it. <laughs> I mean, that that's all I will have to say on that one, is they, they will have definitely earned it. Oh, without a doubt. What do you think the game plan is going to be Uh, going against Green Bay uh, again next week for the Vikings. You know, what what is their plan to win? I don't see the game plan changing much. Putting pressure on Rodgers, containing the deep ball, stopping the run. That's what they're going to be doing. On offense, you're going to see that balance between Christian Ponder and Adrian Peterson. You're not going to see much else. That's what I say, too. I was having a conversation with my dad uh, earlier today. And I go, the most important thing for Minnesota is they just got to hand the ball off to Adrian. And I go, and I'm not talking about, you know, him getting 2,000 yards or breaking records for that. It's like, no, they've you've just got to feed Adrian because he's what's got you to the postseason. Just because you're in the postseason doesn't mean that we're magically going to turn into the 98 squad and we're going to start chucking the ball around all over the place. Like, that's not the offense that we're designed like, that's not the team that we are. We don't have the personnel for that. The personnel that we have is to run the ball up your throat with Adrian Peterson and uh, get out there with a lead and unleash Jared Allen and our defense to put some pressure on the other team's quarterback and get some turnovers. Like, that's the style of football that we're going to play, and we need to stick to it now that we're in the postseason. Now, the end of the game... The, the Packers knew that Adrian Peterson was going to be running the ball for field position. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had to know it. Every team Yet knows they that. couldn't stop the run. 
and Adrian Peterson kept moving the ball closer and closer and closer and got Blair Walsh that field goal. It's huge. I don't think Ponder passed once on that end drive, did he? Uh, I don't think so. No, that was all that was all Adrian. Yeah, see, so I'm wondering if Bill Musgrave took note of that and said, hey, passing game is nice, but it is complimentary to Adrian Peterson because we saw a lot of the three and outs that started with Ponder passing on first down, and I doubt we'll see a lot of that next next time these teams meet. Yeah, and I, I don't think we need to see that. I mean, just... Just give it to Adrian. Like you said, everyone at home knows it. I know it. The team, the, the, both teams know it, that he's going to get the ball and people still can't stop him. So just uh, just keep doing it and let guys like Jarius and uh, Jerome and Michael Jenkins come up with key plays when they're needed to keep the ball, keep the chains moving. And uh, this team will have... Uh, uh, you know, as good a shot as what they did this week of picking up another win next week. I've got to say, this is so much fun to be talking postseason. I was not expecting this at all. I thought at this point in time, I'd be talking about, okay, the Vikings are out of the playoffs. They're going to be drafting in this position. You know, I, I thought we'd be talking about that right now. And yeah. to be talking about possibly knocking the Green Bay Packers out of the playoffs. <laughs> Could you ask for a better scenario? I mean... It's uh, it was been a fun week for Minnesota just knowing that uh, we had to beat Green Bay to get into the uh, the postseason, and the first week of the postseason we get to go right back and beat Green Bay. It's like it's just, yep. it's it's stressful. I, I mean, you would <laughs> you would rather for some reason be playing the Kansas City Chiefs next week, but <laughs> but. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, I would love to beat Green Bay in back-to-back weeks like that. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. It won't be easy. It's going to be a challenge. That's what makes it fun. I, I believe right now the opening line is the Packers are seven-and-a-half-point favorites. Sure. Go right ahead and let them pick against you know, Everyone has picked against us all season long, and let them just keep picking against us. It honestly does not matter. What's crazy, though, is think about this. Okay, the Packers beat the Vikings next week. That's expected. Yeah. That's supposed to happen. Yep. The Vikings aren't even supposed to be where they're at. No. At this point, where they're at in the playoffs right now is already a bonus. I know I said this last week, too. This team is doing stuff that people said couldn't be done by this team. They said they lacked talent. They said they didn't have the tools to get it done. And they're doing it. Which is why I think, uh, back to our a topic we had earlier in the show, Bill Musgrave is going to be here next year. I know a lot of people don't think that he will be. And I think you got to look at it and go, Bill has taken an offense that doesn't have a lot of weapons on it outside of Adrian Peterson, and he's getting enough production out of the passing game to uh, to get the job done and to get enough, they got enough wins that they are the uh, number six seed now. So uh, yep. I think Bill Musgrave's going to be back. I think it would actually be a mistake to get rid of Bill Musgrave and bring in an entirely new offensive scheme that the team, including Christian Ponder, would have to relearn after this season. Now, I've been a pretty harsh critic of Musgrave too, but... I've been seeing this, this weird side of Christian Ponder that's getting a lot more relaxed. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, during the game, anyway. During the pregame, did you see him? He looked so nervous. He looked like he was going to poop his pants. <laughs> no, I, I missed the Ponder pooping his pants look, apparently. Oh, I, I got to see if I can find the Ponder pooping his face look. Because they had a split screen that Aaron Rodgers on one half, and Aaron Rodgers is just, you know, throwing the ball around. That like was nothing, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Ponder's eyes are wide open, and he looks like he's just a deer caught in the headlights. It was so weird <laughs> because for the past three weeks, Minnesota has been treating every game like it's an elimination game. Oh yeah. And they're going to keep doing that. The same thing. One game at a time. 
And I know it's a cliche, but that is how the Vikings do it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really good for this team. Uh, like you said, it's a bonus where we're at right now. And if we get, uh, if we're competitive, but we lose next week, it's good for this team because then you can sit down to some of the veterans, like I say, like Jared Allen, and you can go, we we need to restructure your contract so that it makes more sense, so that we have more cap room, so that we can go out and we can get, uh, you know, more wide receivers or, you know, offensive linemen or whatever the position is that you want to name so that we can bring them in because... Uh, Look at what we did last. People want to play for contenders. You're right. Yeah, people are going to want to come to this team, and it's we're not going to. Okay, it's fun to sit here and say, yeah, we're going to trade Joe Webb and uh, Toby Gerhardt and uh, second and a third round draft pick, and we're going to get Larry Fitzgerald. And you know, we're not going to do that. We're not going to get Larry Fitzgerald on some crazy, insane trade like that. But no. we're going to bring in other guys like. Uh, Jerome Simpson or like uh, Jerome Felton, guys that you might not be super familiar with, they're going to get a shot. But because of where we're at, like you said, we're going to be able to attract more. More people are going to want to come and give the team a serious look. Right, and the veterans will want to stay because they see, hey, we do have a shot of winning here. Yeah. And if you lock down your coaching staff and they know that well, we're not going to be going through a, a, a complete new offensive coaching scheme. That's going to be important for a guy like Jared Allen to know that there, there's going to be continuity in Minnesota. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah. And that's all I have for this week. Do you have anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, I just want to thank everyone for sticking with us through uh, you know the entire season and uh, interacting with us over Twitter and on Facebook. And I know me and Adam really appreciate it, and uh, we're – Definitely. We're both looking forward to doing another show next week after Minnesota wins in Lambeau Field, right? Hopefully we'll have more to talk about like this next week and we won't be talking about where the Vikings are drafting. Yeah. We'll talk about that after the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to thank everyone again for listening and remind everyone to stay classy in Minnesota.